What up guys, that comic awesome here, doing another review, doing X-Men Blue 26, and man, this series continues to uh, surprise, and uh, it grabs me, oh, it grabs me, this, anybody who's not reading this, this is the X-Men series that like, everyone's like, wanted, and then hasn't read, like, especially this story arc, like, it is the series, like, everyone is like, I wish we had classic X-Men stories. This is a classic X-Men story. There's even a Sentinel destroying in it. And it is awesome. And it has a great X-Men message. Um, so the original X-Men blue team, which consisted of the time-displaced um, X-Men, Cyclops, Iceman, Angel, Beast, Jean Grey... All still lost in space. Um, so, so this happens prior to Venomized. So where they all have returned. This kind of does give you a little cut of what is going on with them. But then the team has really now shifted to a group of different X-Men. But it's not even it's not even about the team. It's more it's more about um, them, like the book, the story. Uh, there, there is a lot going on uh, that is bigger than just one, one team. Uh, so we kind of start off. Uh, Havoc and the White Queen have teamed up with uh, Miss Sinister, um, and I can't remember who else. Bastion to make Mother Vine and send it out all to all the major cities. Mother Vine causes secondary uh, and. Oh, excuse me, tertiary mutations in already mutants and primary mutations in people who have, who didn't even have the mutant gene to begin with. So pretty much, um, it's a fairly played plot, I would say. You know, I think the original X-Men movie was this, you know, pretty much turning humans into mutants and uh, giving mutants uh, more power, um... You know, so they can kind of spread. So we get kind of caught up on what's happening in space. Uh, the team is still kind of dealing with the loss of Gene. Uh, and their ship is completely damaged. So they're still like adrift. Um, I enjoyed that part. Uh, next, they kind of showed the city. Um, the city's being hit with Mother Vine. And people, you know, just like spontaneously mutating. Uh, and I like this here. So these Sentinels show up. And they're like, you know, catalog mutant designation, uh, Uniscron or Uniscoin, or however you say her name. Do not despair. Uh, this is you are experiencing secondary mutation due to mother vine. This is uh, this may be unsettling, but is normal. Our mission is to provide aid. So now the Sentinels are the good guys to the mutants. And I love her reaction. See, she's like Sentinels. And I'm not going anywhere with you. And let those, you know, let those mutants go. So then, of course, the X-Men show up. And they do awesome X-Men things. They, they they kick ass and take names. And I love this because you can take so much context out of this. Um, to me, I took the, the forced mutation of the species again is like a uh what am i looking for like a forced um not occupation but pretty much forcing someone to go along with you when you don't want to that's a for like that's the forced mutation sentinels who used to be the bad guy are now trying to help that forced mutation and so they're even sitting here like, you know, hey, like our parameters not to hurt mutants. Our goal is to, to just help new mutants cope. And of course, mutants who have been around for a while are like, uh, we don't trust Sentinels, the end. And they're like, there's a really good line with Polaris where, uh, you know, the Sentinels like, you know, we only want to save mutant kind. And she says, we want the same thing, I imagine for right now at least. But you're a puppet of a monster, 
and that means you're scrapyard bound. So what that means is like, like a lot of political debates today, uh, if you look at the arguments on both sides, they tend, no one's going to say, I hate people. Like, I mean, if you hate people, then there's, you're just the asshole. Um, but if you, you know, if you're a decent human being, no, whether you vote it one way or vote another way, you like people, everyone likes people, everyone's a person. And like, so that's what she's trying to say. She's like, look, you know, I'm for fighting for mutants too, but you're doing it in a way that is a way too aggressive and you know, we can't have that. You're hurting, you're, you're not helping mutant kind. You're just, you're hurting it by, by forcing this upon them. Um, and then there's another good bit where, um, uh, they end up taking control. Mother Vine wasn't just about giving secondary mutations. Uh, it was about, uh, taking control of all the mutants that they created. Uh, and I like the fact that so Havoc is orchestrating this thing, uh, and you know him and the White Queen are Emma Frost are together. In earlier issues, she was talking to him as if they were playing Sinister and Bastion, um, kind of as pawns that they were going to get mutants to uprise and then take them out. But now it appears that Emma was not in on this controlling mutants um, situation and it kind of adds another interesting kind of wrinkle and twist into this um, story again this feels like a really great X-Men book the art is good it feels like a I mean look at this like granite the characters to me like you have Jimmy Hudson who's Wolverine's son from another dimension, then you have like Draken, who I think is like a clone or you know, or a son of and I could I could do without some of that, but it's I mean when you're looking at what the story is, it feels good. It works. I liked it. But yeah, that's my thoughts on that. If you want classic X-Men feel, this is where you get it. Definitely pick it up. I'm going to be reading it still. Um, I'm wondering how they're going to fit after Venomized the old X-Men team back into this. Or if there will be kind of another offshoot. Or if the time displaced people might be going back to uh, the past at some point. But yeah, subscribe over here. Watch some more videos. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you next time.